Hi, this is Nice Matthew. Hope you're doing well. Back again for another week of the transits. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody who sent me well wishes last week because I had a bit of a cold. I do appreciate it and I'm all better this week. So obviously all your well wishes have uh, worked to my benefit. So thank you again. So let's get into the transits. The way the week is set up, it's kind of interesting in that we have a beginning theme of the week. And then as it progresses and we get sort of into Thursday later in the week, we have a brand new theme. And that's when we're going to get that channel of the 1949 that I talked about before. I would say that the beginning of the week would be a little bit more quiet. That's my expectation. And then as the week progresses and we get closer to the weekend, we could have a little bit more activity, you could say, happening where um, we have a little bit more emotional energy because we are going to be getting a full definition of the 1949 between Jupiter and Saturn because Saturn moved into moves into the gate 19 on Thursday. So that is what we're sort of looking at this week. And like I said, it's going to be a mixed bag of energy. No matter what it is, we'll, we'll do just fine. It's just something to keep in mind that there is potential for some emotional energy later on in the week. So enjoy the beginning of the week. If you need to get out and do some stuff, that might be the time to do it. And then as the week progresses and, um, and things get maybe potentially a little bit more frenetic and a little bit more emotionally charged, maybe if, if possible to uh, stay out of the fray. So the beginning of the week, we have the sun in the gate one, and we also have the earth in the gate two. So when we talk about the sun in the gate one, it really is this idea of shining of the shining of who we are. The gate one is the energy that comes from the G center, and it does talk about our core identity. Some people might say it's the seat of the soul. I oftentimes will say that because I do feel that the G center is one of those centers that we really do have a lot of our self identity and love and a lot of really powerful inspirational gates that can can kind of shift who we are and how we are in the world. Basically how we are empowering ourselves and in, in doing so we're empowering other people who are in our aura or just empowering other people in general. It is this potential to express yourself. Now, when we talk about the gate, when we are talking about this expression of the self that is kind of like explaining who you are through whatever creative outlet you're using. And that's that's the whole point of it, because it is coming from the identity center. The gate eight is the expression, or you could almost say the translation of the energy into words, where the gate one is just this kind of connection with the soul identity or the soul connection. And when we do allow our creativity to flow as we do with all individual energy, because this is individual energy, it really is speaking to this idea of expressing our individual self. And when we get to this, this particular gate, this is really the, the most powerful expression of the self to the world because it is a direct connection to the throat. The 1-8 channel is the only creative channel of the individual circuit or of the knowing circuit. So it really does have a lot of power and there is a lot of energy to direct our creative flow into the places that we feel we want to. Now we also have to remember that this channel, although it is powerful and it is very creative, there is this potential to have this concept of wanting to speak about who you are or wanting to, to contribute because it is about contribution and not being able to contribute because people are shutting you down because you've you've um, decided to just, you know, blurt out what you want to say, which is, you know, we can all say is part of life. We get excited about something and we want to tell the world about what it is or, or something that we're creatively working on and we can get excited and we want to talk about it. And then what can happen is because this is projected energy, people could sometimes, like I said, shut you down and kind of, I would say almost um, to the point where you don't want to talk about it anymore. And that there is always potential for this energy with the whole channel. So it is a very delicate channel. But it's, it, it is also a channel where we can really have mutative and inspirational and creativity that kind of knows no bounds because the, the, the key words with this energy is creativity without limitation. And it is a primal energy of creativity. So when we think about a primal energy of creativity, it means that there is no limitation. And it is also a roll gate. So it speaks to the idea of how we express ourselves when we have certain profile lines. And I did a whole video on that. So if you're interested, you can have a look and it will it give you an expression of how your creativity can sometimes best flow or your individual creativity can best flow and how we best express ourselves to the world. So if you're interested, you can check that video out. Uh, Ra Uruhu called this one and the two because the earth is in the gate two right now. He called it a binary. And what this is really talking to is this idea of 
the creativity or the direction of your creative mutation is directly connected to the direction of your true life of where you're going because the gate two talks about the magnetic monopole where we are kind of put on a trajectory of life where we, if we tap into this energy and allow it to show us the way it will take us where we need to go for this life and for our life purpose that's the whole point of it so when we have the gate one and the gate two we talk about the gate one being this expression of the self expression of the soul expression of the story of you in whatever medium you use because it's projected we need other people to acknowledge it to see us to say yes what do you have to say and when that happens that's when we can release this mutative magic into the world and that's completely what it is the other perspective of individual energy of any kind is this idea and later on in the week when we have the sun moving into the gate 43 and, and the earth moving into the gate 23 more mutative energy more individuality and it all comes in a pulse and it all comes when it's meant to come we cannot make it happen any faster because we want to will it into being or anything like that that's just not how it works this is a flow of energy that comes when it's going to come and it leaves when it's going to leave and we express it as we want to and we also know that because we have some level of mutative energy or individual energy this week that there is potential for melancholy and that's going to go, kind of keep through the whole week and melancholy is you know, from an individual perspective is truly related to this idea of uh, expressing ourselves creatively. And a lot of people say that some of the most creative times in their lives are the times when they were melancholic or kind of on the low side of, of um, what you could say the wave, not necessarily a wave because it is individuality. It's not actually a wave. It does talk to the idea of highs and lows within this energy. Sometimes in the lows, when we are expressing ourselves creatively or even moving our bodies in a creative way or anything, just trying to direct that energy in a way that we're not internalizing it inst and, and instead we're externalizing it is the way that you can work with this energy to get the most out of the energy, to allow it to shift the way it's going to, because all these energies sh shift organically. We don't, we don't actually have any ability to shift their moods. We can try to, sometimes good music or, or something, like I said, the creative flow of some kind that you're, you're maybe journaling or you're, Maybe you're out dancing or something like that. That can shift the energy because it's it's connected to the expression of your creativity. We can't say we know exactly how we can shift it or when it will shift, only that we can work with it, allow it to be directed where it needs to go in a way that we're externalizing it. And a lot of amazing and beautiful things can come out of this individual energy because we, we have to remember that this is mutative energy. This is energy that is bringing in something brand new. So that in itself is powerful and impactful but we also know that as a collective it takes time for us to adopt new ways of being anything that new is new in in some way now we're into the quarter of mutation we started that with the gate one many of the gates within the quarter of mutation talk to this idea of bringing something new into the collective now not everything is going to make it to the next stage you could say but having said that if we never try we'll never get an opportunity at all so it's all about giving our best shot now, we also do have uh, the energy of the gate 44 being transited by Mercury is going to be in the gate 244 this week, as well as um, Mars is also going to be in the gate 44. So we're finishing up this planet gates. We're not quite done there. Mars will be the last planet to go through the gate 44. Now, Mercury is mainly neutral within this energy. So we're just talking about this idea that we might be hearing more about the new and improved and how we can get it across. New messaging, advertising, trying to get a new message across. And I think if you look at the perspective of the climate change summit that we've been seeing for the last week or, or or more and continuing on we have these protests about climate change happening i think the messaging is that we need to have a new pattern and we need to kind of move in a new direction and that's kind of really in line with gate 44 and you know that's going to be going forward into the week but you know what we what we look at in a very you could say um kind of calm way in a way that we're trying to make a change, you know, the peaceful kind of protests, those types of things can get a little bit more heightened and activated as the week goes on because we do have the emotional energy that's kind of showing up. From a global perspective, the 1949 is something that we're going to look at as we want support, the people want support. We threw our support behind this particular leader or this particular organization. And what are we getting? Are we getting something back? And if we don't feel we're getting something back, that's when we're going to really want to push back to revolt because it is the gate 49. This is all about revolution. 
the gate 19 is all about being sensitive to the needs of people, to the needs of what we want in this world. And when we talk about the 1949, it's always going to be this idea of support in because all tribal energy is about support and it is support for your basic needs of life. Whatever those things are, we, we need them as a human race, as, as human beings, we need those types of things. And when we don't feel as though we're being supported to have those basic things of life, and that's when we can sometimes start to push back. And when you have the gate 44 sort of involved in it, Mars is going to move into the gate 44 sort of when we have the 1949 being activated later in the week. And Mars is saying, you know, let's just get it done. I don't care about, you know, how it's done, but we need to get this message across whatever way we can. And it can be very forceful in the way it delivers the message. Mars is not as happy in this energy because we also have to remember, you know, Mars is a cutting edge kind of message that we're going to get. Just do this. And, and, and you know, it's the general, it's, it's the military rules. When you have a general, you don't ask them questions. You listen to what they say. And that's kind of what Mars is like. In the gate 44, it says, okay, this is the new messaging. This is the new model. This is the, what we're going to be putting in. This is a new improved and you take it or leave it. This is how it's going to be. So if we look at the gate 44 as an intuitive energy an energy that we can get some intuitive ideas about what's a good opportunity for us, what's a correct pattern, how patterns are actually showing up our memories. We have a cellular memory, they say in the gate 44, and this can come from like a very long time ago. Sometimes they could even say it's like a sort of a past cellular memory from generations before us They give us this concept of, okay, I see something happening in this particular moment. Is it the past repeating? Is it going to be okay? So then we see this, this fear of patterns going in the same direction. If we're tapping into our intuition, we're going to know what feels right for us, what things we know are going in the, in the direction we want, and what things are not necessarily going in the direction what we, that we want. And we can always try to start to shift it up and change it, the pattern according to what we feel is right for us. Because it builds on this idea of the gate 32, which is all about change. As soon as we have this idea, okay, we need to have change. What can be changed? What can be transformed into something better? And what should we left, be left alone altogether? When we get to the gate 44, we've already made the decision about where we want to go, what we are actually have let go of already. And we're making a new, a new and improved kind of idea of something that we want to bring in this collective. So this talks about the idea that we, we want better systems for the world. We want a better hierarchy, you could say, because the gate 44 does talk about the hierarchy. And how we have, um, it's the same themes that we talked about last week, this idea that some people are super rich and have all, all the pie, and then there, there are other people that don't have any of it. And how is that balanced? When we look at the 1949 and we see that as well, that's all talking about balance as well. How come we're not being supported? We're giving you our support, but we're not getting what we need. From a, from a personal perspective, when we come with the 1949 and we, we do have Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter is all about expansion. Saturn is about contraction. So we know that this is going to be a balancing of the energy. And what we want with the balancing of this energy is a balance in our relationships. Are we giving too much? Are we receiving too much? Where's the balance in our relationship? Sometimes you'll look at a relationship and you'll say, it doesn't work for me anymore. There's no hope. There's no place to go with this. And that could be deciding that you just don't want to do it anymore. The other perspective is to try and salvage it, to try and look at a way that you can bring balance into the re relationship. This is looking out for your own needs, for where you feel you're being supported and, and where you're not feeling that you're being supported. They could also be looking at this idea of giving way too much of yourself and not really receiving anything in return. With the 1949 being activated, we know that that's going to bring emotional energy for the whole of the collective, the whole world, you could say. Everybody in the world will be connected in some way to this emotional energy because it's a planetary transit. The other perspective of emotional energy is, like Rauru said, it is confrontational. So in other words, that's where we're sort of coming out and saying, okay, I can't do this anymore. I need something better. This is not going to work for me. And that's the type of energy that we're talking about. But we do have some other things that are happening that kind of can help balance the energy. One is that we have Venus moving into the gate 58, which is actually quite a nice energy, which is all about this idea of joy of life, bettering our lives. It is connected to the 18, so it would be the 1858 channel. But without the 18, we do have this idea of the, let's get the joy in life. Let's get a better perspective. Let's get things that make us feel happier. And when it comes to something like that, if the gate 58 is talking about stimulation of joy, 
How do we feel that we are stimulated by life around us? What are the things that make us feel happy to be alive? And that's where we're kind of wanting to push into something where if we have a lot of this frenzied energy around us, can we go somewhere else? Can we listen to good music? Can we have a nice meal? Can we have a walk in the park where we can actually just spend some time with nature to look at the world around us, to see the beauty within the world, to understand that there is, there is potential and there is an ability to get a better world for us all. And this is kind of focusing on the abundance of beauty that we do have around us, the things that we do have already in this world. And William Shatner went on a, a space shuttle or something like that up into space with the Jeff Bezos uh, space shuttle. And that's got a whole bunch of uh, things that people are not happy about because of the climate and all that kind of stuff. But Regardless of that, the one thing he did say is that he was emotional looking at the earth, looking at this big, beautiful earth and, and how amazingly you know, spectacular it was because we don't always see it from that perspective. We see it from a very narrow perspective. And he said he could never look at the world again the same way because he had seen it in that moment of how beautiful it was. So those are the kind of energies that we could be looking at with Venus showing us the beauty, showing us the things that stimulate us. And it doesn't have to be something that costs money. It can be something that is just, you know, right out in your backyard, just a bird that that has a spectacular little, you know, song that that makes you feel good. I mean, I, I think that the for me, the marvel is that we have these cold winters where I live and we see these little birds and they're singing away. And uh, they're, you know, they, they have very hard lives, just trying to get a meal every day, just trying to get fed, just trying to keep warm at night. And yet they still have time to sing. And I think that if, if there's anything we can take from that is this idea that, yes, we do have struggles. We do have things that are difficult in our lives, but we, we still do have time to sing because that's what it's all about. Life is all about having the struggles, having those moments of difficulty, but also having those moments where we have beauty and allow beauty to be within our lives and allow that moment where we can see something beyond what is on social media, beyond what people are saying is not right with the world beyond all those things that we always have kind of buzzing in our, our ears we can start to look at something that is beautiful the earth around us the the creatures that that live with us in in this world and the creatures that can teach us a lot by just their simplicity and sometimes that's what the the biggest thing is just kind of drop into the simplicity of what in fact makes me feel good the other perspective is that later in the week we do have the sun moving into the gate 43 and we also have the earth moving into the gate 23. The reversal happened in May, some I think between May 9th and May sort of 14th or something like that, where we had the sun going in the gate 23 and the earth in the gate 43. So remember, this is going to be in opposition. So it means that we're going to get the full channel. That means we're going to have to find Ajna and throat. A lot of people may want to speak their mind. They might want to just talk about things that are, are kind of um, new and innovative things. When we have the earth in the gate 23, it does speak to this idea of having an ability to express our individuality or the, the new and mutative things that we're thinking about, those kind of far reaching ideas that we want to bring into the world. And remember, with mutation, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes timing. Timing is a big key with this energy. But if you have an opportunity, again, it's another projected channel to be recognized or acknowledged or even invited to talk about those mutative ideas that you have, you can be grounded in the words that you're going to be able to deliver. And usually with the gate 23, it is grounding into this idea of an economy of words, not kind of being too elaborate in how you're trying to explain anything. It's assimilation. It is kind of trying to try to translate what you have in your mind into something that you can articulate in a way that people can understand what you're trying to go with and potentially move to the next step where you can start to bring these mutative ideas or these brand new ways of doing things into the collective, because that's the, the nature of mutation. Mutation is how we evolve. It is how we move forward in life. If we didn't have the mutation, we wouldn't have the evolution that we've had. I think the key thing to remember is that this is a week where if we are just kind of speaking our mind or just speaking about whatever we feel like we want to, if we're not being acknowledged for what we have to say, we might get shut down. And that is not what anybody wants to have happen. So ideally, uh, this is a week to listen more and to speak less. And if you have an opportunity to speak about what you want to speak about, then that's amazing. But if you're not given that opportunity, you can still do as you please. 
but just be keep in mind that you may not necessarily be received in the way that you actually want to be received. The 1949 channel, just on a final note, the 1949 channel will continue until November 23rd, and then it will move on. And then we're going to be getting into, Jupiter will move into the gate 30. The thing about the gate 30 that I hadn't actually thought about until I kind of thought about it was Jupiter has already gone through the gate 30 and it's just kind of doing a, a final pass before it moves on to Pisces or the gate 55, you could say. The thing about that is that I didn't really connect with the idea that it is the fates. The gate 30 is the fates as much as it is intensity and, and holding on to a dream of what we want to bring in in an abstract perspective. The fates have six different lines and each line has a particular way of how we deal with uh, when the fates get in our way, you could say, or when things don't go as planned. So we have a, a, an idea of how we want to bring something into to being with the gate 41, this inspiration or this, this feeling of, I really want to do this particular thing. And the fake fates come in and say, well, no, we have uh, different plans, but it doesn't mean stop. It means that certain ways of being can shift it up so that you can actually move forward. What that says is that each particular line that Jupiter will be going through when it goes through 30 line one, 30 line two, those types of things, there's a different theme. Now, 30 line one is composure and 30 line two is, is uh, pragmatism. I have a whole video on it. I'll leave the link below. So if you want to get more information, it does talk about your profiles as well. So it's like a genetic continuity that can help you with your profiles and how you deal with when the fates come in your way. But as a collective, I think that it's, it, it is going to be a really nice idea that we can keep those particular themes in mind. So when we, when we get to the gate 30 line one and things are going a certain way and they're not going exactly the way we want to, the, the key is always going to be composure to, to hold your, yourself together, to wait for things to change, to not freak out, to, to understand that this is part of life and that there is a way to get around it. So that that's what the key with the energy is. And I will, I think, bring that into play for the transits as we go forward, because I think it's a great idea. It's an experiment for me because I can't really say that I truly know whether it's going to play out in the world, but I, my expectation is, is, is that it should play out in the world because Jupiter's a big expansive planet. And I think it should, it, we definitely will feel it. We can always look back at when it was there before in the past. And I think that um, I haven't had time to actually do the research, but I think that there is potential to actually see how it was playing out in the past how it played out for you when it was actually going through in the last time. And to give you some context, the last time it played out was from about April 9th, 2021 to May 25th, 2021. So around that area, that was one time that it was transiting through that area, then it retrograded. And then the next one was July 27th to September 10th. So around those areas. So you can look back at what was happening for you in those particular periods of time that potentially may have shown you when you needed to have a certain way of being to have this level of uh, working with the fates so that you can get ahead in life. Because ultimately, we always know that the best laid plans, as they say, are usually um, when the gods laugh at us. But other than that, that's the transits for the week. I do hope you have a really good week. And I will be back again next week. And next week, it's going to be eclipse season. So uh, we'll talk about that then. Until then, take care. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.